Warning, warning, warning. The following video you are about to see contains graphic content and lip smacking. Viewer discretion is advised. What's up, no shame gang? Hey, bitch. It's your girl, unapologetically me. And tonight, guys, I am definitely, definitely, definitely back with another banger. Okay, tonight, guys, this meal was requested and also it's one of my favorites. So... Let's just jump right off into it because I'm hungry and I'm ready to eat. Let's go. We're going to go ahead and bow our heads in prayer and we're going to get right off into this yummy goodness. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for the food that I'm about to receive. May it nourish and strengthen my body. Lord Jesus, I ask that you bless this food in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. <coughs> okay, guys, I got uh, neighbors upstairs now. Okay, so, let's, and we got the Zero Sugar Mountain Dew on deck, no promo. Let's go ahead and get that poured up. Okay, y'all, and let's get into it. Y'all already know I got to put, what we got is, we've got, come on back over there, pig feet, thumbnail, <laughs> we've got some collards with cucumbers. Thumbnail. <laughs> okay, y'all. And we got, y'all already know, I like the big red wine vinaigrette on deck. And we got some hot water cornbread. So let's get off into it. Uh, do I want to do a story time tonight? I'm not going to put my, oh, I want my hot sauce first. Oh, I'm trying to think. Or do I just want to eat? My next story time is going to be about how did my family feel when I was out there on drugs like that? Out there, out there. How did they feel and what was our relationship like? It was basically, you know, if I needed somewhere to stay, they would let me stay with them. But for the most part, for most of my addiction, I didn't come. I went, went around my family because, first of all, I, probably was, I was a little ashamed. I was a lot of shame. So, and I was just wilding out. So, I was out there staying with friends and people that got high, you know, but had their own place. Like a friend girl or something like that. So shit. But then, um, as I started to, in my last years, I guess about my last, I want to say maybe three years, two or three years of getting high. That's when I started coming back around my family. They already know what it was with me. Um... And then I just, you know, went through the phases. I would stay with friends that didn't get high, and I'd get myself together. And then most of the time, I would end up getting back high again. But I always longed to be drug-free and, you know, not get high. But I just wasn't strong enough until, like I said, I gave it to that man upstairs. And... He answered my prayer, and now all I got to do is my part, and that's stay the F away from it. But, yeah. And, I, yeah, I stayed with my family, but for the most part, I didn't. I was out there. Mm. 
just, uh, I don't like when it start looking like that, but this is pig feet. Mmm. But if I ever needed any time, oh, that's so good. Any place to stay. My family wasn't going to turn me down. Mm -mm -mm. This got to go. Y'all. Mm -mm -mm. So good. And the greens got the um, red rind vinegar red on it. Mmm. Mmm. Yes, sir. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm -mm. That was good. Mm. But for the most part, when I was out there doing my little shit, I was I was staying with friends and and let me go turn the air on, guys. Yeah, but for the most part, I was staying with friends, people that got high. You know, all of them didn't. Usually when I stayed with friends that wasn't getting high, I was trying to get myself together. Because... I don't know how many times I tried to quit. I know I tried to quit bottom. It was more than one hand. Fingers on one hand. And then I quit once. I want to get myself together so bad because you be wanting it. Because you know you're pitiful. But you got to really want it. I even checked myself into a rehab. <clears throat> I just woke up one morning. Probably broke. Left the payday. Because that's when I would reflect the next day. The day of, I didn't care. I was getting high. But the next day when you broke, mm. I remember when I stayed with my older sister. The one I prank. I will get you paid. Motion detected at your front door. I'm not winning from the hell of that. I will get paid and I'll be telling my sister, yeah, I'm going to put this money up because this is my bus fare to work next week. For the next two weeks, I saw it in town. and I spent all that money, bus fare and all. 
and then my sister would give me money to get to work. But anyway, like I said, back to rehab. Mm. I went to the Good Samaritan. And I ended up getting put out of there. Not for drug use, though. When you're in a place like that, and the pay, we, it was long term. But you could get put out. Like, the first 30 days, you had to isolate. Couldn't talk to nobody on the phone. Nobody couldn't come and visit you on visiting days. You just have to isolate. And reflect on why you there and what your goals was to get clean and stay clean. So, I was doing good. And I remember therapy. We have therapy every morning. And every time she get to me, she'll be like, Miss Douglas, how you feel today? And I will always be like, I feel good. Um, I would just always have some positive to say because I did feel good because I was doing something to get clean. But she told me after about the fourth day, Miss Douglas, I think you're looking through rose colored glasses because there's no way you can feel good every day when you're struggling with, you know, a drug. And I was not going to say, well, yeah, you right. Because we had two different concepts of looking at him. She was asking me how, I guess, how did I feel, yeah, about, you know, how did I feel today? Was I struggling? Did I want to go get high? Was I craving it? I wasn't thinking like that. I was thinking like, oh, another day clean. Oh, you know, I'm going to try to be successful at this. So, you know, I was proud of myself because no, I wasn't court ordered that. I went on my own. But it was two different perceptions, and I never agreed with her either. And how I got put out because it was black and white people there, of course. And this one white dude, we was playing pool in the game room. That looked so nasty. And um, I think I was just in there with him putting my two cents two cents in because he thought he was smart. He kind of thought he was better than everybody else. So he said something smart to me. I don't really remember what we were arguing about. And I said something smart back to him. And he called me a black nigga. And I picked up a pool stick. And I told him, I'll bust your head with this motherfucking pool stick. That was a threat. Um, I had to isolate. Well, I wasn't mandatory isolating. After they talked to me, they told me that I couldn't cuss or anything else. If anything like that else happened, 
I will have to leave. So they told me, when you're in rehab, and it's an in-house rehab where you stay there, they don't like you to go off by yourself. They want you to stay with the group because they think when you're by yourself, your mind is idling and, you know, stuff like that. They told me, Miss Douglas, you can, if you feel the nerve, if you start getting agitated, just go to your room. So more girls came in. And one of the girls had AIDS or HIV. I have found that out. They said they don't tell their medical records. Of the girl that I was roommates with, she said they told her to go and talk to the girl and kind of try to like, cause the girl was in denial, and told her she could be some positive, you know. So I got to thinking if. Why would they pick her to go talk to the girl? And you know, my mind is just going. I said, out of all these people here, and I've been here longer than that girl, why would they go pick? And this is before I knew the girl had HIV. I just know she was depressed and, you know. And I was like, why would they pick her? And I've been here longer and she just got here. And I started putting, after I found out, I talked to, oh. excuse me, one of the people that watch us at night, you know, that stay there overnight to make sure we don't leave out, because it was like a hotel setting like thing. And um, and when I say that, like one of those little drive-in motels where, you know, they look like doors on every, like little part, one little row of apartments, one bedroom apartment, something like that. And I went to the, I forgot what you called them, people that stayed overnight. But they they were they worked for Samaritan, the Good Samaritan, and they were there. You know, they had different shifts to make sure we didn't leave the premises, go get drugs, bring them back in, because it was right across from the street from the projects. And um, so I was talking to her, me and her had got cool, and I was like, why would they ask her? to talk to her instead of asking me. I've been here longer than her because, you know, I felt like I was a motivator. And she was like, well, don't say nothing about this. She said, but the girl has HIV and she's in denial. And she said that, um, so they wanted, uh, I'm going to call the girl Christian. That's not her real name, though. They wanted Christian, which was my roommate, to talk to her, you know, to kind of, you know, help her, you know, motivate her, and, you know, just cheer her up and stuff. She never told me that my roommate had HIV. I never knew to this day if she had it, but in my mind, I was like, okay, so why to cheer her up unless she's going through the same thing? So I never confronted the girl, but I just started bleaching the shower every day in the commode. Every time she got off the commode, I would be like, you need to wipe that commode off with bleach. You know, that was my ignorance, though. I was younger. Y'all remember that. And, you know, a recovering addict. So I had already been told after I told the guy that, I would bust his motherfucking head with a pool stick that I couldn't get him any kind of disagreements, arguments, uh, really no cursing, or else I was at the door. Okay, so I made it through the 30 days, okay? And that's when, okay, like, well, really, I didn't make it to the 30 days because you have to isolate for 30 days and then they put you in a different, like like I said, it was a section that looked like one level, looked like a motel setting. And, you know, um, 
when you go to the next uh, building, which was when you start getting to leave and go to work and you have to get drug screened when you come back in. But they, they're preparing you to leave and be able to, you know, maintain and keep your sobriety. They even had apart apartments that you could apply for and live in, but you would have to get drug tested in order to keep staying. And if you ever tested dirty, you would have to leave. So, um, you know, all that had went through, and I, I was just kept. I know she was like, "Why is she wiping everything up with bleach every time I touch something?" You know, that was really mean. I, but I was, then, you know, in that state of mind, I was just wrong. Okay, so long story short, um, so she knew my situation that I could not get in trouble, and I think she moved down in the house. Uh, I want to think a week before me, and I think she was already there only a week or two. I think I she did come before me. Okay, so she got to go down there first, and I was to follow her the next week. And so when she was packing up her stuff, because I know she didn't really care for me the way I was acting about the bleach and stuff. So when she was packing up her stuff, I said, you ready to go, ain't you, bitch? You know, just playing. And she went and told on me because I told, I confided in another girl that I thought that maybe my roommate might have had HIV because... Why would they ask her to talk to somebody and nobody else? You know, it was plenty of people that could talk to that girl. But, you know, I thought just put it in my mind, maybe because she's experienced the same thing. And I don't know right to this day if I'm right or wrong. I never, ever confirmed that. But anyway, long story short, she going to go back and tell the counselors on me that I called her a bitch. And she know I was just playing because I was like, bitch, you happy, ain't you? You know, but... She had already started having hard feelings toward me. We were just getting along because we was in the same room when I started bleaching down everything, you know, because I started acting funny, like, you know, just mean. Not, when I say mean, I wasn't like, ugh, nothing like that, but I, every time she came out that bathroom, honey, I was bleaching that shit down. So, long story short, yeah, she went and told on me, and I was so excited. I thought the next day, I think I was supposed to be going to the... um independent house living and that's why I would have been able to start I had told my job that uh I was um you know going to rehab and they let me take off for the 30 days and then I was going back to work and I would have been able to go to work and come back to the complex but um I never get to I never got to make it down there because the day that I was supposed to go down there the next day she told on me and I think because she didn't want me to come over there where she was and she told him that I called her a bitch, and that was it. I had to call my godmama that same night after it was reported to them. It was about 7 o'clock at night, and uh, tell her to come and get me because I had just got put out, and she was she thought it was because of drugs, but it wasn't. So that's that story, guys. I don't want to hold y'all because we're on 23 minutes, and the food was delicious. I don't want no more. But it was definitely good. It was definitely a banger. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching me eat the food as much as I enjoy eating the food. And if you're watching and you're already subscribed to my channel, thank you. I appreciate you. You guys know that I love, 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 love you. There's nothing else I can say. That is the highest compliment that anyone can give you. And that's on a period. And if you have not yet subscribed and you're watching this and you like the content, we ain't mad at you. But what you waiting on? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And turn on post notifications so you'll know every time your girl posts a new video. And with all that being said, goodbye.